Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about flat frames again because we love flat frames. Um, I've noticed quite a, still a lot of confusion around flat frames in general and especially when do I need to take flat frames and when do I need to retake flat frames? And the answer really is quite simple. Whenever there is a change in your optical imaging train. So a few examples. If I change my camera, well, I need to take new flat frames and I will need to match those flat frames with whatever light frames that I take with that new camera that I have connected to my equipment. Same if I change my telescope. If I change my focal reducer or my coma corrector in there, I need to retake flat frames because the optical properties of my system as well as the sensor that takes the data from my system, the camera in other words, are, um, have been changed. If I change my filter, so if I have a filter drawer or a filter wheel like this one and I change my filter, I need to take another flat frame because, um, well, each filter will have different dust motes on them. And dust motes will cast, cast shadows on the sensor and so uh, my flat frames need to be uh, updated. Um, do I need to change? Like, so that means that if I take a LRGB uh, fil uh, uh, a picture through a luminance filter, then through a red filter, then through a gr uh, green filter, then through a blue filter, I need to take flat frames for each of those filters separately uh, in order to get uh, the correct result. Now, if you have a filter drawer in particular, in theory, you should be retaking flat frames for the same filter every time you remove the filter and put, put it back in. The reason being that you might have new dust motes or if you've like removed the filter and then put it back in, the rotation of that filter might have changed. In which case you want to take another flat frame. And that makes like using filter drawers, uh, if you're really really serious about flat frames. I'm not, but if you are, in theory, you'd want to really retake your flat frame pretty much at each session because you're using a filter drawer. Um, if you're using a filter wheel and you have an imaging train that's never changing, you can hope that uh, not too much dust will make its way into the system between sessions and you can just uh, take one set of flat frames for each of the filters and reuse that set of flat frames un until you change something in the optical train. Now, I've given some examples of uh, things that, have, uh, that can change, that require taking new flat frames. So changing a filter uh, requires new flat frames. Putting back the same filter, if you had to take it out, uh, rotate it within a filter drawer, that kind of stuff, in theory, you need new flat frames. If you've uh, rotated an off-axis guider to find a guide star, you may need to take a new flat frame. Uh, if your off-axis guider was rotated so that, for example, it casts a little bit of shadow on the uh, corner of your sensor, which can absolutely happen. You can have no shadow when the off-axis guider is placed like above the shortest dimension of your sensor. But once you rotate it to find a guide star, it might cast a shadow on the sensor. You want to retake your flat frames because you want to, your, flat, your flat frames to correct for that new shadow, which means that at the end of the session, you should not uh, rotate your off-axis guider again until you've taken flat frames. Huh. It, gets, uh, it gets annoying, huh? doesn't it? Um, and another reason you may want to change, uh, to change your flat frames, let's say I take this camera, I decided my, my back focus between uh, the coma corrector and my camera sensor was uh, too short. So I want to add one millimeter of distance between the two. So I take out a little like uh, plastic ring and I want to insert it between the camera and the filter wheel. And so I, you know, I unscrew my camera. I put the little uh, plastic shim in there and then I rescrew the camera. What will have happened? First, some dust might have come on the sensor window of the camera. So I may need to retake my flat frames. Second, um, you've added a shim in there, which means that you have actually rotated the camera relative to the optics. And that means that uh, 
you know, dust motes as well have been rotated and you need to take flat frames again. So if in your uh, system you have a rotator, in theory, you will want to take flat frames for each angle that you have taken a picture at and match the angles of your rotator to the flat frames for that particular angle. <sighs> That's a lot of scenarios, but it really goes back to um, the fact that anything that changes in your imaging train basically requires new flat frames. And you can imagine if you have an, uh, an electric rotator that's controlled by a USB and you have multiple targets within a single night and each time you rotate uh, the uh, camera and filter wheel system using your rotator, for example, well, that means that at the, the following day, if you, haven't ha if you don't have flat frames yet, you'll have to ask that electronic rotator to go back to each of the angles that it rotated to so you're able to take flat frames. And then you'll need to properly categorize your flat frames for each of your targets because each of the targets had your camera at a different angle. So it's doable because you have a USB controlled electronic uh, rotator, which can reproduce exactly the same angle, assuming it doesn't have too much backlash and doesn't have too much slippage, which is not a given. Um, and if you've used a manual rotator, well, you really want to not change the rotation until you've taken the proper flat frames for that. So that's another thing, that's another aspect of complexity there in terms of when you're using a rotator to frame your targets properly because that can force you to retake flat frames. Um, I'm thinking about like if you're using a camera lens and you're closing the aperture of that camera lens you'll also be affecting the light angle of the rays which means you will be ex um, affecting vignetting Thank you for everyone for uh, mentioning that I was not pronouncing it correctly. Uh, I was pronouncing it uh, vignetting. I like vignetting. It has some kind of charm to it, doesn't it? The quiv charm. No? No? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, vignetting. So if you change the aperture of your telescope uh, by a significant amount, you need to take uh, flat frames again. So if I were for whatever reason to choose to put a mask um, a circle mask, a disc basically as a mask or a, a, yeah, whatever, a mask on top of my telescope to reduce the aperture, I will need to take new flat frames with that mask. Or if I'm using a camera lens, uh, which I do, and I've noticed that my star shapes are not great when I'm wide open and I want to close the aperture by a few uh, stops, so let's say I want to go from f2.8 to f4, then I will need to take flat frames again. So, you can see there are many aspects and many things that will require to take new flat frames. And that's one of the things that makes flat frames the enemy of the lazy astrophotographer. Seriously, flat frames are the worst. Um, so this explains why I don't have any of those fancy gadgets like rotators. I have a fixed imaging train. And if I cannot fit my targets perfectly into my field of view, so be it. I've stopped caring. Uh, it's worth not having to move my arse and take more flat frames. I, yeah, I'm not even to go more into that. It's just too much work. And, oh man, I sound so lazy uh, for once. Uh, but anyway, that's why I have a fixed optical system here. My, the only thing that moves in here is my focuser. And you might remember from a previous uh, video, focus is the one thing that doesn't affect your flat frames. Isn't that good news? It is. Well, it does if you change the focus a lot for a system where you're, you're moving the primary mirror, but otherwise you're good. So in the end, everything changes your flat frame. Yay, except focus. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's pretty much it. So yeah, be diligent about your flat frames. If anything, if you want to change anything about your optical train besides focus, take flat frames first if you've taken uh, light frames but not matching flats yet. Um, and after you've changed the configuration of your system, if it's going to be a fixed system like mine, take your flat frames for each of your filters. If I have a filter wheel like that, I'll be taking my flat frames for each filter and then I'm done. 
and then you can just reuse those flats as long as you don't touch anything in that system. And if one day you notice that you have a new dust moat uh, because dust like filters through through like the focuser tube or whatever into uh, your your camera sensor onto a filter, then you'll take new flat frames for that. But since the, 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 the imaging train is fixed, you know, it's not a big deal because, uh, okay, you've taken your lights, you've calibrated them with your old flats, you've noticed that the calibration is not perfect, no big deal, I'm gonna take new flat frames because my system has not changed, it's fixed, I can do that. So that's one of the reasons why I hate changing my systems and why I try to keep my systems as fixed as possible which is uh, the case here. And right now, it's still cloudy, so I still cannot image. So might, I might actually take some flat frames afterward, after this video, because uh, I don't think since changing that, that camera, I've taken proper flat frames. Whew, so some work for me. And with that, I hope uh, this video was useful because uh, so many people can be at the same time uh, too worried about flat frames like uh, you saw in the video about focus and flat frames, but also not worried enough about flat frames. See a lot of people that don't realize that rotating, rotating stuff requires new flat frames. Um, so with this, I hope this was useful. If you find this uh, useful, please click on the like button. Please leave a comment down below with any remarks you have. And if you are not subscribed to this channel yet, and you think this was useful and you like this style of videos, uh, please, don't hesitate to go and subscribe. Click on the little notification bell icon sting, as well. And uh, that way you'll, uh, you won't miss any of my further videos, uh, always on some uh, cool topics about astrophotography. And with that, uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.